All praise is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, uh, this next brother that I'm about to introduce, he's what we call a gentle giant in the nation of Islam. Many of you have seen this brother. He's uh, maybe six foot three or six foot four. He's a straight up soldier for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He loves the teachings and is serious about it. Before I introduce this brother who I'm about to introduce, I want you to know this is his first time having an opportunity to speak and to represent the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. This beautiful brother who I'm about to introduce, as I was giving his bio, let me quickly run over it if I could. We know that our brother, he's from Central America, talking about Brother Antonio Muhammad. He's going to deliver this message today with our support. His parents are from Costa Rica. The teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, brothers and sisters, affected him in such a way that now brother has decided to join the ministry class in order to take this life-saving message back to where he's from and build Panama into a city for the Nation of Islam backing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I want to say very quickly, as Minister Ishmael gave me the opportunity and pointed it out, for those who don't know the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the believers in the first phase of our mission, they had mosques and study groups literally all over the earth. The Nation of Islam is not just here in America. It's been represented literally in every country throughout the earth. And I was told that we had literal mosques and study groups in Honduras. We had it in Panama. We were in Belize, and Minister Ishmael and Minister Rasul, as you know, were settled in Mexico to learn the culture and the ways of the Mexican people and now can speak the language. And Minister Rasul, our regional minister for the seventh region, is working with the Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters all over that part of the world. So we want to give our brother our undivided attention, and you will be surprised what will come out of his mouth because his heart is full of love for the wisdom that saved his life. Help me to receive a gentle giant, a straight up warrior, minister, and brother, our big brother, Antonio Muhammad. Bring him on, my arm, with a round of applause and help him deliver this message. En el nombre de Alá, el benevolente, el misericordioso, le doy gracias a Alá por haberme dado el privilegio de estar enfrente de mis hermanos y hermanas para poder llevar hacia ustedes el amor de Dios de sus hermanos en Centroamérica. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Excusing myself, please, because my language probably is not so, you know, profound like many of us that born in America. I born in a Latin American country. I know three different languages, and uh, I'm trying to speak English in a better manner to reach to my brothers and sisters. I would like to excuse some of you all that didn't understand my introduction because I did it in Spanish. But I would like you all to understand that in 1555, when John Hawkins bring the first slave to America, it was like the CTS bus. They drop us in different stops. Some in Panama, some in Central America, some in Honduras. But when you turn on the TV in these beautiful places, you will not see the blackness of our skin. In the TVs are even in position of, of high level uh, standards in government because they're trying always to keep us down so the world will think that we do not exist. But I would like to come and tell each and every brother here in America that you all have brothers in Central America, black and beautiful like the ones I see here right now. I would like to be a witness of something that happened in my life that it shaped me. It was when the United States invaded Panama. That was something that I lived. It was a holy experience, but 
I get to learn through the teaching of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad through my beautiful brother and father, Minister Louis Farrakhan, that everything's happening is for a reason. Nothing happened just to happen. God allowed many things to happen between us because he wants us to grow over emotion to the thinking of God. Many of us sometimes have wealth that we receive from different, in different ways, but we forgot where we get it after we have it. That's why God many times take it away from us and give it to others that really appreciate the love of God that live in us. And he's not flying in the air like a spooky God. I say all that is because when I listen to Minister Farrakhan after the invasion of Panama, my hope reborn. It reborn because it brings tears to my eyes when I see thousands of brothers and sisters laying in the floor beside the, some beside the, the parents could not be moved in between blood. And that's why I learned from that moment that you don't burn a terrorist. You make a terrorist. You make a terrorist because those kids back home that I live with a heart broke, they don't hate you and me. They hate a system, a policy that don't care what they want. They go over anybody. They use any method to destroy any person to receive what they want. So those little brothers and sisters back home that I know if they will really understand what is the nation of Islam and what you are represent to them here in America, they will understand that somebody really loved them in this great nation. But, but all I would like to say that <laughs> when I came to America, I didn't think I was coming to the greatest nation in the world. But I get to understand I came to the more filthy, wicked one. So I give thanks and praise to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that he, in his heart, he recognized God himself that came to him through Master Farah Muhammad to give him that beautiful teaching to go back to the beginning of times, like what the Bible says in Genesis. So I would like, brothers and sisters, that regardless of what, regardless of what we think, what we express towards those that don't look like you are, different colors, different uh, religion, I would like always, each and every one, to remember the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And look as example, my brother and father, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yesterday, God blessed me to sit down up front and saw our reminder speaking to us. But sometimes my mind used to fly and go out of this beautiful edifice back home. And I was praying and I was saying, oh God, please fill my, this vessel with love, with knowledge and understanding so I can go back and plant this seed. Because I know it's not going to be easy. Maybe you all think it's crazy, but this kind of teaching back home might cost my life. But I learned already <laughs> that's a beautiful message of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that to him is our eventual return. So this life that I have here don't belongs to me. It belongs to Almighty God Allah. And this beautiful book, brother, please, if anyone don't have it, get it. As I've been reading it, I read it three times already. But this last time I was reading it, I was looking at the, the cover, and it said, Message to the Black Man in America. At the beginning, when I, re I read it, I didn't feel that it was just for the black man in North America, but we believe in actual fact. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, he could see ahead, far away, because he said, Message to the Black Man in America. We're talking about North, South, Central, our part of America. So this teaching got to reach to my brothers and sisters. We need it to clean our heart, to take it to a higher level so we can open our mouth and, and, and be bold and be strong, like the beautiful man that I get to, to really appreciate, the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, my brother, my mentor, 
my inspiration because I learned from small that I don't believe and follow no man by age. I follow men by example. And that's the best example I ever see in my entire life. Because part of my life is a little rough in the sense that I didn't grow with a father. I grew with a mother. And she was <laughs> practically like Minister Farrakh and mother. When I listened to him and he said he could not say a lie, and it remind, remind me my mother, she's still alive. You know, and I give thanks and praise to Almighty God that like she still in between these living souls that I can teach her and tell her what I'm doing here in America. And she's really excited and glad. I hope I, I get to bring her before I'm, uh, God take her away. But I remember that I was so rude that my mother, when she used to go and lay down and, and rest, you know, normally everybody, you know, when we were small, we used to lay down like midday and take a, a little nap. But my mother used to put me and kneel down beside her bed. And she would sleep. She would snore. And I'm kneeling down looking at my mother. But when my mother wake up, she, she could see me, but I didn't know she wake. And she always used to box me. She gave me a slap. And I said, Mom, but why you slap me? I said, because I was sleeping. I don't know if you move. In case you move. <laughs> so... <laughs> I would like you all to understand that I give thanks and praise to my mother because she's who feed me and teach me how to be a man. So I, anytime I see my beautiful sisters, I can see you all as my sisters, as my mentors, my mothers, because I really understand what is growing up without a father. But I read in the Bible that Almighty God Allah said clearly, he didn't say love your mother and your father. He said honor. Honor your mother and your father and your days in this land. It's going to be beautiful. But one thing we have to understand that the Bible teach and shows that mother is somebody that really evolved and bring things from, from zero, from the womb. The most honorable minister, Farrakhan, he's my mother in America. He retraining me and he teaching me to be different, to love each and every one here as what you all are. Not look on the color of your skin, look on what coming inside your heart. I would like, please, um, to just extend my greeting to all of you all from inside of my heart. All the brothers and sisters that see me and give me advice and training me, I'm really excited. I'm glad to be in this house. I'm really glad. And I would like to just uh, finish my little introduction saying that I love, I love you all. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let Brother Antonio here and give him a hand. All praise is due to Allah. We expect great things from our beloved brother in the next few months and years. You'll see him doing a tremendous job in growing and helping the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And truly, when you hear this teaching, that's all you want to do with your life. There's really nothing else that I've found that brings me the joy and the comfort and the power and the passion that the Nation of Islam and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan did for me. I can't think of nothing else in the world that comforts me like this message. With that being said, I know on the sister side in particular, you saw who just came through that mighty door. And I know you are as excited as I am to see the mother of our nation. Let us hear it for Mother Tynetta Muhammad. Give her a warm round of applause. Mas Mayam, receive Mother Tynetta Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. I want to also very quickly, before I bring up her beloved son, our beloved brother, 
we have in the audience, and he's nestled in, and he probably will tell me later, I better not do this again, but I must take you just a moment, if you would please receive and welcome our beloved Supreme Captain of the Nation of Islam, Mustafa Farrakhan. He's here. He's right there. Give him a warm round of applause. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. And he didn't get up early Sunday morning and come alone. Help me to receive his other half, our beloved sister, Sister Karen Farrakhan. Give her a warm round of applause as well. All praise is due to Allah. Now, if I get in trouble for introducing them, y'all going to have to work with your brother because I might get a paddle for that one. But I want to do this, brothers and sisters. I have the great and distinct honor of introducing a brother that I've introduced on many occasions, but I never take it for granted. He's a young brother. He's really just a few years older than I am, but he's the biological son of the Messiah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And more importantly than that, he's the spiritual son of his father. He's also the spiritual son of his big uncle, as he calls him, Tio, our beloved leader and teacher, the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. I'm talking about a young man who's dedicated his life to the resurrection and redemption of our people. He's right here with you and I in Chicago, Illinois, doing a fantastic job in one of the hardest cities to work in the nation of Islam. Will you help me to receive at this time the assistant minister to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, our beloved brother. Bring on Minister Ishmael Muhammad with a warm masquayam. Bring him home, brothers and sisters. Give him a warm round of applause. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. We thank Allah for his many blessings, his many gifts, his goodness to the human family. I thank Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad for raising up from among us a divine leader, teacher, and guide in the personage of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I give thanks each and every day to Almighty God, Allah. And I thank the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for preparing one for us today. A man who is in our midst today that is a divine leader, teacher, and guide to the whole of humanity, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet all of you, dear family, brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you feeling this morning? Well, I first uh, want to thank all of you for coming back uh, this morning after a long day yesterday. And I think that our beloved teacher and minister uh, deserves uh, another warm round of applause. And we must express our appreciation and to the chairman of the commission, Minister Dr. Ali Mohammed, and all of the commissioners and presenters yesterday that did an excellent job in bringing us uh, up to date on their work. I was inspired like you with all that was shared with us uh, yesterday, and I believe that the road that was given to us that all of us who are sincere in making our word bond will travel between now and February 2004. We will see uh, a rebirth in ourselves, in our community, in our nation. And the work, of course, is in front of us to do. And that is to fulfill the mission of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yesterday, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan shared with us that Mother Tainetta Mohammed had prepared a presentation, which uh, time on yesterday's program did not allow her to make that presentation. And so out of honor and respect and our interest to also hear what she has to say regarding the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the value of the lessons which contains our assignment given to us
from Master Farad Mohammed. She will have a few words to share with us this morning, and inshallah, I will come back uh, to wrap things up, and we can go about our day, Allah willing, with our loved ones and family. So with that said, Mas Mariam family, will you help me to receive my mother? She's your mother. She's one of the mothers of our great faith, Mother Tainetta Muhammad. Help me to receive her with a warm round of applause. Thank you. The greetings of peace to everyone who is in attendance today at Mas Miriam. Assalamu alaikum. And please know that I am so humbly grateful to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for taking the time in his busy, busy schedule to read over uh, a paper that I presented to him uh, for his approval, and that is the reason that I am here today. I thank Almighty God Allah for coming in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, the finder of the lost and found members of an ancient nation of Islam, members of the ancient tribe, of Shabbats. We thank him for searching among us to find one to represent him in his mind, his spirit, and his lineage to be able to represent that body of wisdom and knowledge that we call the supreme wisdom. And that one, of course, is the honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is now in the exalted position with his Lord as the exalted Christ. We also thank him and thank him over and over again that we were given an extension of time in order to come back to the straight path of this great teaching. And that, of course, is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Sisters, brothers, uh, at this hour, it's a little new experience for us. But I think it's good to have a morning session. Our minds are a little more bright, you know, and we're able to enjoy each other's company. I only have a few words, and I was thinking over my presentation all the time since the Honorable Minister gave me this opportunity to begin this process. And basically, generally, so that you will have a knowledge of where I'm coming from, and especially because we have visitors for the first time, and you're hearing words that you've probably never heard before. And I want to take my time in laying a base for what I hope will be another opportunity to go into more details. Everything in nature, everything that has been created was created by a motion of movement that we call time. And the measurement of that motion or that movement bears its context to everything that has been formed since the beginning of time. So the subject I chose to introduce this subject is journey, a journey, into the mind of God. Now that may seem like very difficult and complex, but when we put all of the actual facts together, we can prove that God came to us out of the beginning of that movement or motion with an exact and precise movement in time to be able to make himself known at this particular end of our journey. What is the most precious commodity that we have? That's a question. 
My answer to that is thought. Hmm? Can you find another precious commodity more important than thought? It is what binds us to the nature of the laws out of which we are created. But what is it to examine the thought or the thinking of God? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote, and our Savior has arrived, and I think that this is a good place to begin. On page 122 through page 123, he says that the coming of Master Farad Muhammad comes to make all things new. All right? And he said that this is like the creation of us in the beginning. The God who created us had no material to use to begin a creation. He had only himself. Therefore, out of darkness and the thoughtless and invisible, he brought out the visible vision and thought and idea. Now we come to the next part of that. He made a brain which had the power to cover the sphere of our thinking and to produce from that thought what image or vision that the brain cells could conceive. Now I'm going to ask you another question. Do we have that same potential? All right, so then we are related to God in the area of our ability to think and to use our thoughts to materialize our vision. Is that true? Okay. Now, these things at that time, at that time, we're talking about the beginning, when the first motion was made, this was all new. There was no plan or universe except his. This is our father, the black man, the maker. The wisdom, idea, and way of thinking of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever, is superior to any way of believing today. Now, is this saying that Master Farad Muhammad is the originator of the universe that we're in? Or does it say that he has a superior way of believing today? Which means that his thought was so powerful in his thinking of God and going into the mind and the thinking of the first God that he broke through the veil of darkness in the beginning of space, and he now has the idea and the thought of recreating, listen carefully, an entire new universe, an entire new world. And you and I have the same potential to be able to materialize and bring into existence something altogether new. So we are the people who were given this first revelation, startling revelation of God presence in man and in woman and in you. It is hard for us to believe that God would choose such a people who had deviated so much that we are called in the scriptures the rebellious children of Israel. Not the Jewish nation that we are familiar with, but we are like a parallel to what we see or read in the scriptures about the rebellious house of Israel. So in my presentation, I want to, you to follow my mind and my thinking until your mind and your thinking will go into the mind and the thinking of God himself. Is that sound a little complicated? All right. How does he do this? He goes to the root 
root of all things, as our original father did in the beginning, when he built the universe out of nothing. He is as one sitting, listen to this, out in space, with no material of space to make something altogether new. He goes after the root in making this new world of people. How does he do it? He makes a new mind for us and a new way of thinking. He teaches us a different education, one that we have never had before. So we can throw out, in a way, the old textbooks <laughs> that have been trying to understand the nature of life, the biology, the science, and I don't mean that we throw it away. It is useful, okay, in the right and proper application. But first, the idea is to clear our mind of everything that has to do with this world. And in clearing the mind of everything that has to do with this world, you will then have to rely upon your own thinking, your own mind, to bring into reality what is inside of you. So he gives us an education on the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, listen now, of gods, not of prophets, but of the gods of the prophets of the past. He builds our minds according to the way gods think and not the way or the thinking of servants, which are the prophets of God. The prophets of the past were inspired and their inspiration was true, but it is limited when God himself takes over the rule of his kingdom. Most Christian believers put that uh, personification in Jesus or in the Christ or in the Messiah, and it is written in the scriptures that he would come. Is that true? At the end of what world? Satan's world. He would come and he would set up his new kingdom, but he would come under a disguise. He would come like a thief in the night. And that is the way that Master Farad Muhammad came in the early 1930s. He came under a disguise and he held back his identity because we would not be able to understand until he raised up one from among us, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to teach us into this profound knowledge. So we call this body of knowledge, which my son mentioned, the lessons, as the supreme wisdom. This means, as I use this analogy, it's like a wheel within a wheel of a vision that takes us back, and I use this prophet as an example, because this prophet uh, is Ezekiel. You're familiar with Ezekiel. And one of the signs that Ezekiel came with in revealing himself as the Son of Man, which is mentioned about 90 plus times in this particular chapter, Son of Man, go to the rebellious house of Israel. Son of Man, uh, I want you to prophesy against Jerusalem. I want you to prophesy against Tyre and all of those ancient cities of uh, Palestine. And this was during a period when the children of Israel were exiled and taken into bondage in Babylon. So he is one of those prophets that was risen up during that particular period of time. And I think most of you must be familiar with the vision of Ezekiel, in which he was by a particular river called the River of Chabar. And when he was at that river, the heavens opened and Ezekiel was able to see like a whirlwind coming out of the north, this dazzling, bright appearance of a sign of God that was to strengthen him in his mission during out the whole course of his teaching and warning to the rebellious house of Israel who were held captive in Babylon. Now, what is very, very interesting as you read the first chapter down to the 26th verse, 
it describes clearly that the appearance of this wheel contained a firmament, and firmament is something that is solid or mass or material, and that this firmament was over the heads of these cherubim or these four living creatures that all had, interestingly enough, symbol of, um, of a beast or cattle, ox and the eagle, a bird and a lion, but they all had the appearance of the face of a man. And up underneath their wings, which you believe angels fly with wings, if you believe that, that is, was symbolic. But up under their wings also were the appearance of their hands. All right. Then it says that his throne was made of a terrible crystal. And I always tried to figure out what was this terrible crystal. Now the crystal here, and terrible crystal turns out to be sapphire, sapphire stone. And if you see the sapphire stone, it is very dark hued, the majority of the sapphire, right? And it reflects light in the form of like fire, right? All right, now the metallic appearance of what we call today in the research and common uh, language of the ufologists or the UFO uh, scientists, they describe a shimmering metallic type of structure to these silver disks, right? All right. Now, I want to prove to you something, that if we see or think into nothingness, your mind and your thought will almost automatically pick up photographically a picture. Is that true? You hardly can think a thought without seeing light. Is that true? All right. Now, above the firmament that was over their heads, referring to the angels, was the likeness of a throne like the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man uh, above upon it. So everywhere we look, cross-sectioning Bible, whether it's Ezekiel, Isaiah, or any of the old prophets, and even if we open the Holy Quran, we will find the evidence that God, in his true appearance, in power and in glory, can be no other than a man that can identify with other men and other women. You cannot imagine, even when you think of an angel, do you see a spook? Tell the truth. Your idea of an angel takes on a what? A physical form. And if you think of even God, you think of a man named the Christ or the Messiah coming at the end of the world. We're looking for the appearance of a man. We cannot make the glory of God anything other than a man. What we call the spirit is contained in the mind. And it is the light that goes on in your mind to give you life to travel on your journey through your thoughts. The average thought, we are taught in the Supreme Wisdom lessons, travels at 24 billion miles per second. So why are we given those dimensions and those measurements? It is because we too have to go back in our thinking because we can remember everything that has ever happened in our lives. But as we grow older, what happens is the rust starts accumulating on the rusty locks, they call it, of our brain cells. So we can't think past the last minute. If someone were to say, what did you think in the last minute, you would have a very difficult time <laughs> trying to tell us what that last thought was. 
Okay? So as long as we can think, we can be redeemed. But if you're out of your mind, it'll be very hard <laughs> to redeem you because the majority or the most important part of the redemption of you is yourself. As a man thinketh, so is he. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go too much deeper in Ezekiel because I have a limited period of time. But the reason I bring Ezekiel's vision in is because when Master Farad Muhammad came in the likeness and appearance of a man, he pointed to the heavens. And he described to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and taught him the measurements and every detail of this craft that is called the mother's plane and the mother's ship. I'm bringing this up into the modern time in just a moment. But when he came in 1930, he also acknowledged the discovery of a planet, a new planet that was discovered by the scientists in uh, March of that year. They acknowledged it, announced it, the discovery of Pluto. Planet Pluto is the ninth planet out from the sun. So if Pluto represents in the Greek mythology as the god of the underworld, that's what they call it. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad uses the word a little fool. Pluto was like a little fool. So if the planet Pluto is nine place out from the sun, and that ends the circle of the solar system with our sun and its nine planets. And if we are able to calculate our thoughts, which we are given in the Supreme Wisdom, a travel, time travel, if I could put it that way, time travel on this way, how many seconds will it take to travel to the faraway planet Pluto. And it gives 10 seconds. How many trips can you make in 10 seconds to the faraway planet Pluto? So what was the idea of Master Farad Muhammad putting all of these kinds of measurements and calculations in the body of material that we call the Supreme Wisdom? Why is it that each new convert or each new member of the nation of Islam must begin with the recital of 10 questions and answers called student enrollment. This means that we have been, are like initiates, entering into a new school of thought. And this new school of thought is not just coming from anybody, uh, an imam visiting us from the East, or a theologian coming from any part of the world. That's why we were secluded, and still are secluded. And most people really don't understand the aims and the purpose of our being so isolated and within this special arrangement of studies. It was to expand our mind, like you read in Star Trek, right? Star Trek says that to go where no man has ever gone before, right? But unless he takes the lead in telling us where no man has gone before, we won't accept it so easily. We have to wait till he keeps probing the space and keeps finding these new objects constantly coming out of this dark womb of space before we'll say, ooh, did you, did you read what the white man said today? Did you read what this scientist discovered? And if we go back into this body of material that we are to be studying within our classes, MGT, FOI, we will find all of the modern scientific investigations right there, even to the exploding of the atom, even to quantum mechanics and quantum physics the exploding about a part of atoms and finding the tiniest little neutrinos or quarks or whatever they design as being part and parcel of the atom itself. So how do we understand now 
that I reach this point of my presentation, what the mind and the thought of God is. If you have a mind and you have a thought, can you align that mind and that thought to the mind and the thinking of God? The Honorable Minister Farrakhan released to us a study guide called Rising Above Emotion into the what? Thinking of God. And he explores how the brain works. And if we look at our body, the nine systems of our body, the tenth system of that body that makes everything work is where? Okay, it's right here in our mind. And the mind is the control center, like a computer. You can imagine how the computer works. It has a little brain, and it has a, a matrix. And I know that most everybody saw that movie called The Matrix, right? And it was like a computer game where you go into a program that was designed not by God, but was designed by an enemy to God to trap the individual who enters into the matrix, hmm? say, which one do you want? You want to go here with the blue pill or you want to go here with the red pill, right? And so if you take the blue pill, what happens? It's an unreal reality. And you're programmed to follow that unreal uh, mind of the architect of the blue pill. The architect of the blue pill is Satan. And the red, when you see, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, and I'm going to stretch your minds and imagination one step further. The master pointed out to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad during his teaching of three and a half years, he pointed to the heavens again. And he pointed out two stars, a red star and a blue star. And he said that the red star represents the original, okay, design and people of a civilization that would never be destroyed. The blue star represents an unreal world or a world that is contrary to the nature of the original man and people. So if you can imagine what is taking place in our world today, we have one chaos after another chaos after another chaos. Is that right? And nobody knows what this chaos will ultimately come to. Well, it's the end of one world and a bumpy ride that we've been on for 6,000 years, and that bumpy road is about ready to go all the way down into the pit. And a new world order is rising up to take its place. I mentioned in the beginning a quote from a philosopher, Manly P. Hall, actually, and he made this statement that everything that is structured has a number, has a color, and has a pattern, a pattern in which um, all things are formed that are formed. So that means that each one of us is designed with a mathematical inclination in the way that we think. This left brain, right wing, or, or hemisphere is really only information that has come through with the study of the brain over the last 20 years. And now what they are trying to say is that what we want is the left brain and the right brain to work as coordinates. So you don't think because I'm uh, musical and I have imagination and I'm creative that you cover up this side of the brain and only the right side is working. That would be rather chaotic. And the left side is supposed to be the logical um, uh, numbers, mathematics, and all of that, right? Well, don't you know if we think with the proper thought that we can do all of that, isn't that true? Okay, we're creative, and you have to use the whole brain in order to think through darkness into light. 
I'm going to read you a quote from a book, The Mind's Unknown Power. And it speaks about, of course, the enterprise speeds away into darkness and a somber voice begins this introduction with space, the final frontier. But the final frontier has not even be ch been chartered yet. And that frontier is within you. Our mind, our brain, our thinking, and only three little pounds or three and a half pounds of gray and white matter is the weight of this brain. What a marvelous way that we have to think through and solve any problems that we need to solve. But why are we scattered? The enemy did such a good job in keeping us back from our true self that is so difficult to bring us back together whole again. So we are fragmented, we're divided, we have our youth today running absolutely on a rampage of destruction because they are separated from the loving parents and the, and the peers and the family has been just totally devastated. This is not any different than what he did with us during slavery. We were separated. Our, our children sometimes were taken by one slave master. The mothers and the fathers were taken to another plantation. And so getting back together today is the hardest job that any leader, any teacher has to bring us back together in unity. The human brain can store more information than all the libraries in the world. And one final quote, we're talking about this universe, is that everything we know of the universe, everything we know from subatomic particles to distant galaxies, everything we feel from love for our children to fear of enemy nations is experienced and modeled in our brains. Without the brains, nothing, listen to this, not quarks, not black holes, nor love, nor hatred, would exist for us. So it is all in our mind. So going back to the quotes from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in Our Savior Has Arrived, this is exactly what he said, and science is proving every day that the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad are exact and precise, and that is what the body of our supreme wisdom when you enter, and you enter this school, you immediately throw off the old way of thinking until the new idea and the creativity will begin to rise in your mind and the shackles and the dross and the locks that are on our brain will gradually fall away and we will become the people of God and the elect of God and the new world rulers that will rule with a high civilization, freedom, justice, and equality for all. And this is why our Savior comes to us in the beginning and has been with us during this whole journey to make our minds and our thinking line up with the mind and the thinking of Almighty God. I thank you for your time, and I hope that you have taken this journey with me, and that if you have questions, if we can entertain questions, I will leave that uh, to my son. This was only a little peek into where we're going. And when you become a member of the Nation of Islam, you are committed and dedicated to learning the, the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and the knowledge of yourself. Thank you for being so attentive. I didn't uh, shake you up with a lot of emotional firebombs today. Because I wanted us to kind of relax, take it easy, and really, really begin to think. Think. Because your God is in you. Your God resides in you. And this marvelous mind 
This marvelous capacity of the brain stores everything from the beginning of time. And it has been known that even the baby, as he develops the brain cells, he's connected to a whole world of neural nets of, of energy that connects him that he, the baby, can remember everything since the beginning of time. So that means that when that baby comes into the world, it is up to the mothers and the fathers to prepare that mind and put it in the right environment so that the light of God will shine forth. So I thank you again for listening, and I hope that we'll meet again soon for more details on the supreme wisdom lessons of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and why it's so important for our people to come back to life again, come back to yourself, restore yourself. That is the purpose of these teachings. Thank you so very much for your attention. And if you have questions, I will let my son at the end of the lecture um, request that of you. All right? Thank you so much. And those of you who are here for the first time, could I see your hands? I'm just curious. Wow. Very good. May Allah continue to enlighten us and bring us what we need to survive in this end of a world that is very quickly going out to make preparation for your new work in the world of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>
towards that end and his desire for us to become a greater participant in this mission of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, which is the resurrection of our people. Not from the physical grave that many of our loved ones have been buried, but from the grave of ignorance, from the grave of spiritual and moral death, that we may return back, not to a physical place or land, Africa, but back to that state of mind that we were once in and enjoyed before our enemies brought us over here to this north corner in the Western world. Mother Tainetta Muhammad shared with us the wisdom that Master Farad Muhammad left with us as an assignment. And Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, a man who came 72 years ago by himself. You remember your English lesson number C1, right? Look at how our nephew introduces himself. Notice how I said that you have forgotten you have a blood tie with him. He is your nephew, meaning that our brother huh, had a son, is that right? And we are Master Farad Muhammad's uncle. Hello. My name is W.F. Muhammad. I came to North America by myself. Come on, class. You don't forgot less English lesson number C1, huh? Now, I was a kid, we, you know, we used to say it like this. English lesson number C1, number one. My name is W.F. Muhammad. I came to North America by myself. My uncle was brought over here by the trader 379 years ago. My uncle does not know that he is my uncle. Whoa. Think about that. He doesn't know, but I am his nephew. And I'm going to make myself known. And I'm going to reestablish a relationship that has been severed by the enemy. Think about this now. Now, what is demonstrative of this man's love is not only did he come by himself, but I don't think that you will find in any leader or teacher before his appearance and since that has expressed a love for us in these words. I would climb a mountain 40 miles high just to teach one of my suffering brothers and sisters I would eat rattlesnakes for who? My people who have been destroyed and lost and trodden underfoot by a wicked enemy. Now this is a man's love for his people. A love shared, demonstrated, and expressed in his servant, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. A love that remains among us in his servant, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now that is love. That's love. So I thought that we should rekindle our love for the master and love for one another if we are sincere about our commitment to help a man who has already demonstrated his love for us, but it's on us to get ourselves out of the predicament and condition that we, have, that we find ourselves in 
And if we want eternal life, y'all, who wants eternal life? Now, you know we ain't talking about living forever and ever and ever. That's just not going to happen. Everybody has a rendezvous with destiny and every one of us that are alive today at some point in time. We don't know when or under what circumstances, but I got news for you. The coffee that I'm going to give you at breakfast at Mas Mariam will wake you up to the reality that there is no life after death and that all of us will certainly die. The question is, what kind of life do you choose to live while you have the blessing and the gift of life? And how can we gain, acquire, and enjoy peace, happiness, contentment of mind? Well... There was a lawyer that questioned Jesus. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. The teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus' reply was, what is written in the law? How do you read it? Uh-oh, see? We know what is written in the law, but what is your understanding what is your interpretation of what is written in the law and how do you apply it to your life and the lawyer expert in the law answered Jesus love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. These are the two commandments that hang all the prophets and the scriptures and the law. It is to love God with all of your heart, mind, and strength. And the second commandment is likened unto the first. Love thy neighbor as yourself. Well, clearly, there ain't much love in our community for one another because you and I have been devalued. And when you don't think good about yourself, you are not going to think good about anyone else. You will not respect anyone else until you come into self-respect. Is that right? So Jesus said, you answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, the expert in the law. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Uh-oh. See? Who is my neighbor then, Jesus? And Jesus gave him this parable which I share with us this morning. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. And when uh, and and a, the priest came down that road and so to a Levite. When he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side, watching, looking at, seeing a man that had been robbed and stripped, wounded, huh? saw the man in this condition, huh? but walked by on the other side. Huh? But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took 
took him into an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper and told the innkeeper, look after him. And he said, when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Then Jesus asked the expert in the law, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Now, very briefly, Jesus is speaking to the Jews, okay? The Jews had the favor of God through revelation. And they had a special covenant relationship with God. But the error that they made was the knowledge that was given to them through their prophet Moses and many other prophets and messengers in between Abraham and Moses is that they kept that knowledge to themselves. And they took an attitude of exclusivity. So they did not want to share their prophets, their messengers, or the scriptures with anybody outside of their bloodline. Y'all with me? So their covenant with God was broken because they did not do what God had commanded them to do. They fell into transgression and rebellion and disobedience, which was a breach of the contract. Y'all all right? They had a binding agreement with God through the prophets. And Moses gave to them the Ten Commandments. And they broke all of those commandments. And in a relationship, in a marriage, we say, I promise, right? To be faithful, loyal, devoted, dedicated. Is that what we say? Yeah, why y'all get so quiet? <laughs> Boy, it got real quiet. It is what we say. In sickness and in health, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, but sometimes if one spouse gets sick, that's about the end of that relationship and my affection and my love for you because, hell, I'm not going to spend time. I don't have the patience to take care of you. You sick. You need a doctor. I need to put you away. No, oh, this is what happens. You marry a handsome man, strong, beautiful looking brother. But he gets into a terrible accident, has no more use of his limbs, and there goes your love. It died in the accident. Brother, baby, you know, ain't much you can do for me now. So I think I better go find somebody else. Huh? Or the woman gets into a car accident, glass just cut her face up bad, and she was as fine as she can be. These are the trials. You never know what tomorrow will bring. For better or for worse, for richer or poor, I married you because you had money. You had a Hummer. You had an Escalade. Huh? You had knots all in your pants' pockets. They looked like an extra thigh on the physical thigh. And I was in love with what you had because you had means. But the Escalade got repossessed. I had to sell the Hummer. I had to take back all of them rocks I gave you. Huh? Sell the house. Nigga, I'm through with you. Ain't no love here. But hard times can fall on any union, on any marriage. And the question is, are you going to live up to the promise 
and regardless of the circumstances and conditions that come into the union that are trials and tribulations. Is that right? So it is with God and the people. A promise is made from God and the people say, I do. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, Lord, we will keep your commandments. But then they end up committing spiritual fornication, spiritual adultery. What is spiritual adultery? Setting up another God beside God, making carving images. And God says, I, God, am a jealous God. How dare you go sleep with this that has no power at all. But this is what happens. And so the Jews had a special covenant relationship. And as long as they fulfilled and lived up to their promise, they had success, they had life, they were exalted, elevated. So it is with every people, the Arabs, Every people have been visited by a messenger or a prophet and an agreement is made. So God has had many divorces. <laughs> because the minute you fall short of your agreement, there's a separation. And the people through their transgressions and their rebellion separate themselves from God. But steps in a divorce are taken. The parties are separated with the thought of reconciliation. And if reconciliation is not possible, then both parties go their own separate ways. And a divorce is finalized and agreed by the judge. So it is with God and the people. He gives the people a chance to reconcile. But if reconciliation is not made possible and one party does not do what is required of them to do, then we must divorce. And you go your way and I go my way. So God reaches out and searches for another people. Y'all all right? Yes, to every people, a prophet, a sage, a messenger has been sent or raised from the people. But you, you, we, us, have not been visited by a divine man before the coming of Farad Muhammad 72 years ago and the raising up of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as a divine leader, teacher, and guide for a people who have been stripped and robbed and wounded Notice the priests came by. Have you not been visited by the priests? Come on, talk to me, brother and sister. The preacher has looked at our condition and ignored the condition and has just made us to feel better in a pain that never goes away. Talk to me now. We are in a Judeo-Christian society under a Judeo-Christian belief system. And Jesus is talking about a man who traveled or was going from Jerusalem down to Jericho. You were once in an elevated state, but we have fallen down now into a land and into a city Jericho was a city of confusion, huh? where there were thieves and murderers and robbers on the streets. Where have we fallen down to from where we were? Jerusalem was a city of peace. And when we were among our own and among our tribes and among our kinsfolk, we had peace among ourselves until the enemy from Europe came in and took us from where we were down to where we are today in a deplorable condition. So
So here we are, a priest has come, the Levite is a Jew. Both having the scriptures, both having the word of God, but not showing mercy. They only come to see what they can extract from us. So that they can continue to enjoy a lifestyle. Y'all all right? So who has been the good Samaritan? Huh? Who is your neighbor? Huh? A neighbor is someone that lives with you or near you. Huh? So those that have come, they do not identify with us. That's why no red man, no brown man, no yellow man, no white man can solve the problem of black people. God has to have a personal, intimate intercourse with us and bring out of this womb a child and a man that can lead his people out of darkness and deliver them from the condition under which they suffer. All praise is due to Allah. So no Arab can solve our problem. No Chinese, no Japanese can solve our problem. Certainly no European who've created the problem. That's why the book says that the people will be given a teacher. Huh? And where will that teacher come from? Not from the enemy. That teacher has to be raised from among themselves, from their own people, their own bloodline. So Master Farad Muhammad comes and he says, I am your nephew. I have come by myself. Why didn't our own people come to get us? English lesson number C1, right? Our own people didn't know that we were here. And why didn't we go back? We couldn't swim. 9,000 miles. So Jesus says, as the lightning shineth from the east, even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. A man coming from the east by himself. Oh, that's, I mean, your heart just, I mean, when you go over it. And what Master Farad Muhammad had to do and go through and suffer so that this body of knowledge that we have now can be present among us that we all can access this knowledge that we may improve our condition and become whole as a people. And so I close to all of us who love the Lord your God. You love the Lord your God, don't you? With all of your heart? Or do you give some of your heart to you? All your heart to your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or wife? Mm -mm. You give all your heart to God. All your strength, your mind, your soul to God. Because when you give it all to him, he will never disappoint you. You give all of your love to another man or another woman that's unworthy of that. You will definitely be disappointed. You didn't hear me? You will be disappointed. Because the human being in his and her present state is so far below and beneath what we should be. So we are unable in our present state to fulfill and satisfy all of the demands that we have when we come to each other in a relationship. But if you give it all to God, who never lies, 
We lie. He don't lie. His word is good and you can take it to the bank. Every check he writes, it never bounces. It never comes back insufficient funds. But to love God with all your heart, mind, and strength. But to love your neighbor as yourself. That is the command. And when you and I, who have been given knowledge, wisdom, understanding, knowledge of the time, knowledge of the enemy, then our duty is to share that knowledge with others. Otherwise, we will be like those before us having a light. But we hide it, conceal it under a bushel basket. Huh? Afraid to say who you are. Afraid to reach out for your brother and sister that has been robbed and stripped. You know after coming into the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that our people have been robbed of the knowledge of self, the knowledge of their God. We've been stripped of our language. We have been stripped of everything now that we have accepted this teaching, have received the benefit of this teaching. Is that right? Every time we practice it and follow the directions, we have good results. Is that right? And we feel good. Every time we fall short and following those directions, we feel a little bad. We become lazy and lacking in strength. We become cowardly. Huh? So we have to go back to the prayer. Oh Allah, I seek thy refuge from anxiety and grief. Huh? If we are practicing, we won't be burdened with anxiety and grief. Mourning the loss of this or the loss of that one. Or this possession or that possession. Huh? I seek thy refuge from what? The lack of strength and laziness, softness. Huh? I seek thy refuge from being what? By and the ooh. But I forgot the verse before that. Cowardness and niggardliness. See? Can't be niggardly with the teachings now. For me, Se gonna be selfish, huh? Hoard the wisdom, hoard the knowledge, and that's why I resent any group within this membership or body that will access knowledge and then walk with an air of superiority over your fellow brothers and sisters when the knowledge that you are studying is the same knowledge that was given to every member of the nation of Islam. So you can't become an elite group because you think you are studying and sharing some wisdom that somebody else in some other class don't have. Don't do that because God will not show favor on you. It is knowledge to be eagerly shared. And when you love your neighbor, who is your neighbor? Look to your left and look to your right. That is your neighbor. They live with you or near you. And our neighbor is our brother and our sister that is suffering. Next door to the homes where we live. Next to the apartment that you live in up on the upper floor below you. You see the condition of a people who have been stripped, robbed, hit in the head, and they're half dead.
and their half dead. So will we show mercy on them and let them know, brother, the preacher has traveled down this road, seen your condition, passed by on the other side. Everybody has looked at you, brother, but a man came, huh? Saw our condition, huh? And he has poured some oil and some wine and has bound up our wounds. And that man is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. That man is the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. That man. And I want you to come and hear what this man has to say. See, a man that claims to have met God, the claim does not legitimize him. It's his works. So you don't have to busy yourself trying to prove, you know, that God came. Please. There's enough history behind us in our own life experience in this work that bears witness that there is a divine power among us and working for us. So let us increase, dear family, our love for one another, our love for our neighbor, that we may go out now with a renewed spirit to reach all of our people wherever they are and give them the good news that we may prove ourselves worthy of the presence of God. And you may not be able to lift the scripture. It's not important. The man that was blind that was called in, all he could say is, <laughs> I don't know what you charged the man with. All I know is I was blind. I can see nothing. But this man opened up my eyes. And I can now see after being blind. I can now hear after being deaf. I can now walk after being crippled and lame. And I know that I was a dead nigga yesterday, but I am a strong black man and woman today, thanks to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Thank you for listening as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That means God is the greatest. All praise is due to Allah. Tomorrow, brothers, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will be at the FOI class. So be there on time. We start at 7.30. And, and one thing we have to do is put a little more kick in the step. When you know you're a minute late, Two minutes late, you know, can't get out the car walking like you don't know got anywhere to go. You got an appointment. Huh? You know what an appointment is? It's a point in time that you're meant to be at. All right? So when you know you're coming late, now don't just speed up on the pile. Hit one of our beautiful little babies around here. But when you get out that car, man. You walking like you got somewhere to go. You got business to take care of. And you know the master is waiting for you. That's the way we got to move with purpose. Purpose. So tomorrow, inshallah, uh, he will be with us. So we all will be there on time. All right? And all of the brothers who are here, registered, processing, visiting, you are welcome to that class because you know we need a strong man to be the men that we desire to be. And we need a good example, especially after many of us have been deprived 
of a father figure in our lives. God answers all of those needs when he raises a servant. So tomorrow is men's class to, to speak to men so that we can look at what we have to do as men to satisfy the demands of our families, our children, how we can be better fathers, better husbands. We all need to know how to do that better, don't you think? And how we can make more money. That's real. So tomorrow, that's at 7.30 p.m. Next Saturday, inshallah, we'll have our outing. Do we have any of that information? It's going to be right here at um, Jackson Park. We'll start about 10, 11 in the morning, and everybody should come out so that we can play a little ball and grill some cabbage and broccoli and <laughs> barbecue carrots. And it's all right, though, you know. It's better for us. It's better. I mean, I was like clocking everything as he was saying it. I'm good on that. No problem there. No. <laughs> Vegetables. Six months. But the Lord knows what's best for me. And that I will strive to do and we will strive together. And there are many different ways to cook vegetable plates. I don't know, Mom. I'm not a cook. I'm going to be straight up with you. But, you know, I think I can put some carrots in a hot dog bun and put some <laughs> mustard and ketchup on it. But in truth, it is better for us, you know. So, we, uh, yes, ma'am? Veggie burgers. Yes, ma'am. A man cannot live on veggie burgers alone. He must have more of a variety on that plate to satisfy his palate. Uh, but I'm sure <laughs> there's, there are many ways to prepare good meals that are vegetarian without the red meat and the white meat. And all that meat is not good for you. All right? So... With that said, uh, how many are visiting us today, uh, this morning, for your first time? Can I see your hand? Oh, brothers, welcome. Brothers and sisters, we're honored. How many of you believe that what you heard taught this morning is the truth and is good for all of our people? Let me see your beautiful black hand. All praises due to Allah. Well, my dear brother and sister, on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I would like the honor and privilege of shaking your hand personally to welcome you to the Nation of Islam, welcome you to Mas Maryam. This is your family, we are your brothers, and we want to help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan change the condition under which our people suffer. Mas Maryam family, put your hands together as we welcome our brothers and sisters this morning. Come on, brothers and sisters, give them a warm Mas Maryam. Welcome them home, give them a round of applause. Come on, brothers and sisters. You know what it felt like your first time coming down the mighty aisles of the nation of Islam. They're doing the right thing this morning. Give them a warm round of applause. Look at the beauty of the black man and the black woman coming home to their own, to the nation of Islam, to help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan build a nation of freedom, justice, and equality for our people all over Illinois and throughout America. Let your applause be heard. Make them feel welcome, brothers and sisters. They're making the biggest decision of their lives today, putting down the white man's wickedness and picking up the sword of righteousness. Give them a warm round of applause. Look at the beautiful faces of the brothers and sisters accepting their own, and they've decided to be themselves. They couldn't do a better thing on a Sunday morning. Let them hear it, brothers and sisters. Welcome them home to their nation of Islam. Give them the support that they need to do the right thing in a moment like this, in a wicked world like this. Give them a hand. Look at the beauty of the black man coming home to do the right thing. These are the brothers and sisters who will help us build the nation here in Chicago that will reach all over the world. We got a few more beautiful sisters coming down the aisle. 
Don't let your applause die down. I can't think of nothing else better to do. Give them a warm round of applause. The Nation of Islam, the baddest thing smoking in the world today. And all praise is due to Allah. Allahu Akbar. All praise is due to Allah. This is great, isn't it? it? Looks like the same numbers that were here yesterday. And we we made our word bond. And give yourselves a warm round of applause. We made our word bond to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Well, looks like we'll have breakfast again next week. Because the minister didn't say we'd have lunch at 2. So we're going to stay right here in the morning, okay? Next Sunday. And let's bring some more of our people out. And let's just go on ahead and do what we know we have to do. In closing, I ask now for everyone to give generously. Because we are going to make Moss Maryam self-sufficient. That's right. That's right. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't know if I was speaking my brother's native language. And I just want to thank Brother Antonio, nuestro hermano de Panama, con todas las palabras que ofreciste. Gracias, He is a wonderful brother. And I enjoyed what you shared with us. Gracias a usted, hermano. And he's going to need help now. So we got to learn some Spanish yes, sir. because south of Texas, all the way down to Argentina, with the exception of Brazil, everybody speaks Spanish. In Brazil, they speak Portuguese. And so we have a lot of work to do with our Spanish speaking brothers and sisters. But um, I just would like everyone to keep in mind that if we do our work, this mosque, our flagship mosque, Mosque Meriam, the National Center, will not have to depend on the nation to support it. That's right. If we love this mission, and if we go out and get our people and fill this mosque for a 10 o'clock service, and then later on a 2 o'clock service, and later on an evening service, right. and keep it rolling, Right. This mosque can take care of its own bills, its own expenses, that's right. and that's the way it should be. Right. 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 And we will have a greater respect from our family that's out in the field and in other cities. So I ask that you give generously so that we can begin uh, the process of becoming self-sufficient. So at this time, you can stop looking at me and look in your purse. <laughs> <laughs> dig in your pocket and let us give. Charity is a principle of our belief. Brother, what? Yes, you can go ahead, sure. Okay, brothers, y'all can uh, give with me, you know. Oh, man, please. You did it yourself. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Here's the great preacher, Minister Jamil Muhammad. Let's give him a warm round of applause. Great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality. Good to see you. I wish you could have said. Minister Jamil is asking a very important question. Would you like to... I just was wondering how it tastes to have carrots on a hot dog bun. I just... <laughs> That's in my mind. I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to try it and I'll let you know. <laughs> so, uh, dear family, I, th I thought I had another announcement, but I think Minister be out tomorrow. And uh, Saturday is our family outing. And I think that's, that should cover it, right? And uh, we made this announcement yesterday. Of course, the Vanguard have set up tables so that we can uh, make contributions and donations for our children and for our school, which we must support as a community, OK? Muhammad University will be the school that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad envisioned. 
and will be a school of high academic excellence when we all take an active role in making it a great school. Because all good schools have a strong parent-teacher partnership, and the community is involved in making that institution a good school. That's our responsibility, OK? I thank you for that, ma'am. Next door. MUI, yes. If you like to take, please support the school. We have uh, dinners that have been prepared that you can take home.